Welcome to my channel. If you don't know me, my name is Teresa. I am a surface pattern designer and watercolor artist. If you are a subscriber or you've been here before, then welcome back. This tutorial is about loose watercolor and ink florals. So the inevitable question is always, which comes first, the watercolors or the ink? Well, I have your answer. It depends. It depends on whether you are going to use waterproof ink or not. If not, then you definitely have to do the ink last. And that's because if you do it first, they're just going to wash off or worse, bleed when you paint on top of them. So assuming that you're using waterproof ink, then you have the choice. And it depends on how you want to do it. So let me tell you how I think about it. The way that I work, if I use ink first, I'm usually drawing out a very detailed, let's just say flower. I'm going to include all that information and then I'll go back and paint within those lines. Now you can paint loosely over the top. That is another way of doing it. But for me, I feel confined by all those lines. I really like more intuitive painting. So I do watercolors first and I'll allow the painting to evolve organically. As I go, I just watch how things are, are happening and make decisions on the fly about where I want certain elements. And, you know, I just enjoy that experience because you never know what's going to happen. And then after you're finished with all the painting, then I like to go back and say, hmm, where do I want some extra details with the ink? Sometimes I do a lot of ink details, sometimes I don't. But then it just opens up the possibilities for me in the way that I work. So there's no wrong way. So I would suggest that you do it both ways. Experiment and see what you're more comfortable with. Today, we are going to do the watercolors first and then we'll come back with waterproof ink details. Another benefit of using waterproof ink is that then you can make adjustments afterwards if you need to. So let's take a look at our picture. I have a picture of a bulb that I took from my yard. Let's just take a look and just like in the other video with the iris, we're going to decide, because this is a loose painting, what information do we want to keep and what information do we want to ignore? So looking at this, I'm noticing I really love this purple color on this bloom. So I'm going to try and, and get fairly close to that. There are a few different tones in here. So I am going to use my Artistro water travel palette. And I like these purples right here. This first one, the lighter one, they call mauve. So we'll get a little bit of that. And the color next to it is violet. So we're going to mix in a little bit of that. And we'll just see what, what we get. Okay. You know, uh, Dr. Martin's violet is a little more saturated in pigment. So I'm going to go over here to my other palette and grab this Dr. Martin's Violet. And we're going to keep mixing. There's a little bit of these pink tones in here. I like that from the mauve color, but we need to tone it all down now. So we are going to add some Winsor & Newton permanent white gouache to soften that up just a little bit. And as you can see, it's already looking more like the photograph. So we'll just mix this up real good. All right, I think that's looking pretty good. Let's compare it. Yep, that looks pretty good. It's important to mix plenty of paint in the beginning when you are mixing your own color uh, so that you don't run out and run the risk of not being able to mix it exactly the same later on. So let's take a look at this picture again and decide what else do we want to pick out. Uh, I'm noticing there's a cute little bell shape to this bloom and I want to be sure and incorporate that. 
You can see it better on that one. Then there's five point star to each bloom. So we'll want to be sure and, and pick that up too. But um, I, I like the way this looks right here. This elongated, it's not fully open yet. I may do one of those or two or three maybe. Um, so let, let's just kind of get started here. I'm not going to go exactly like the picture. You know, I like to do it on my own. So I'm going to hold this brush up high. This is my mop brush. I'm holding it up high to keep it loose so I'm not getting too detailed. So I will pick out a couple of specific blooms um, to do, but then I'll add some blooms myself and kind of ad lib, you know, a little bit. I don't want to do it exactly. So I'll just speed this up right here while I'm laying down some of the main blooms and I'll drop in some darker pigment. And this is such a light color that it is going to lighten up quite a bit once it dries. So I will likely come back and add to it later, but it's easier to do this Start out light and then you can boost it with color if you need to later. But if you start too dark, then you're you're kind of stuck with it. So I've started out light and looking at this picture, the stem is a green and it doesn't show up as well in this picture as it does in real life, but it's green with a lot of brown in it. So I'm going to use my olive green here with touches of brown. To get that stem and it's just one stem pretty thick too and then for my leaves I want some more sap in it than that so I'm adding sap green with a little of the olive green just so the colors blend well and I'm not going to do my leaves exactly like the picture I'm just gonna this is part of intuitive painting is when you just go with what feels right to you with your composition. So I'm just gonna add, I don't know, three, maybe four larger leaves. Let's see, maybe, maybe one kind of to the front here. Yeah, that's good. And I've dipped this one a little more in the olive green than the others just to make the color stand out a little bit. And I had a lot on my brush so I'm going to pick some of this pigment up because that's really more than I want. I do want it a darker color, but that's a little too much. Let's see, maybe, maybe another one. Just kind of see how I feel here. Yeah, maybe one right here. That's good. Yeah. And it's okay that it touched that other leaf and they're kind of bleeding together. I like that. That's terrific. So for the for the um, bulb, it's got a lot of this olive color in it. So I, I do want to add some of that, but I think I want my bulb a little darker. So I'm going to add lots of browns in here to get this darker than that bulb and I'm just going to drop them in. This is Van Dyke Brown and I'll probably I'll add some sepia. I'll come back with this green, the olive green here in a second to get some. Oh, that's sap green. Nope, that's not what I wanted. I want olive green. There we go. There we go. And just add a little bit in here. And it's not going to be as bright as the one in the photograph because I have this dark brown down first and that's just fine. That's kind of what I want. So I'll just play with this a little bit. And we're going to come back with several layers on this bulb to get really textured. I love bulbs real textured. so. It's dried now. I'm going to switch over to my number 10 round brush 
just so it's not holding as much water and a little more control with this brush. So I'm going to drop in this burnt sienna which will add a, a reddish hue to it. Now I just have clean water on my brush and I'm just going to smooth that out and cover the whole bulb with the clean water so that things will merge together uh, in a pretty way rather than leaving a hard line. I'm just going to move that around a bit and I'll add more browns. We'll speed it up here again uh, while I'm just adding various browns to get the texture. And now I'll add the roots with a little fine liner here and buff titanium. That's pretty straightforward. Just put some little roots down. Then try to darken those up a little bit. Now I think I'll use the sea sponge to add some more textures and I'm going to allow several different browns to get onto the sea sponge. You don't want it too wet, kind of dry is, is best, and just dab it around. Just be careful not to get outside the bulb margin there so that it gets on your paper where you don't want it. And just move it around. Turn your hand also so that it'll be in different directions and you won't have a pattern to your, your texture. And then you can use the other side of it to dab up some of that extra moisture, add a little bit more texture. And now I'm just going to keep repeating those steps over and over. I'll add a little more green because I really want more of that green to show through on the bulb. Uh, and I'm just going to keep going through that until I get it the way that I want it. Um, you know, you can use your brush you can use the paint tube to put some scratches in it just whatever you want to do and i really want more noise out here so i'm going to add some splashes of water i mean not water but pigment i do that sometimes and sometimes i don't it just depends and then i'll go back and work on the bulb some more while that's drying and then once you get it where you want it, you need to really let it dry so that we can go now with the brush pen to add some details. I really like this Micron brush pen. It's waterproof. Um, so we're just, I'm gonna speed this up again so that you can watch me, but um, I take a really long time when I do this. I really think about the flowers and the shapes and and what I want to do because then we're not going to outline every single flower and we're not going to I like to do it real sketchy that's what I have found to be the, the prettiest in my style is to do it sketchy and not draw the whole bloom so as you can see here and the brush pen if you know you could also use a dip pen uh, I use some dip pens sometimes and, and the brush pen sometimes, but if you are new to a dip pen, you might want to start with the brush pen and just get used to outlining with it so that you have thinner and thicker lines. A dip pen can be fairly complicated because it's going to blob out ink from time to time, and I actually like that look but it is hard to control the flow of ink with a dip pen. So you just need to practice it. And I found that working with a brush pen like this one helped me get the feel for it and was more forgiving. Um, so here I'm adding an extra leaf in the back for some balance um, that's not painted. And I, I like doing that, you know, having some elements not filled with pigment. And then I stepped away from this for a while and came back to it and realized, okay, it faded much more than I wanted it to, and it was looking kind of skimpy to me. So because the Micron brush pen is waterproof, once it's completely dry, then we can go and paint on top of it and it's not going to move. 
So I'm going back here and darkening a lot of these blooms and adding some background noise again, adding more blooms that are not in focus. And then I decided, you know, I think I really want to see more pen work. So now that that all of that is dry, I can go back with my pen again and just draw in some little things. And this little part here, I forgot to lock my focus, so it's going to go in and out of focus a little bit, but it's very short. It'll go back in just a second to uh, full lock focus. I just wanted you to be able to see a little closer me drawing. Um, I just want you to note that I'm not drawing every detail. And I personally like that. To me, that's that's a great loose style. Um, some thick lines, some thin lines. Some petals are, are outlined, some are not. You just kind of have to stand back and look at your composition and determine where do I need a little something else. And if if you feel like you don't have very good drawing skills, this is a great way to start training yourself to draw better is by um, just kind of partially drawing elements. And wiggle lines are your friend. Uh, they can, if you just wiggle your line around, it ends up making it look better than you thought it ever would. <laughs> so that's just been my experience. Uh, I want to show you, I found these bulbs, these are not real, uh, this is just something I had in my house, but see this papery stuff right here on the bulbs? I love that part, and see how scratched up they are, and I just, I just love this look, so I am going to work a little bit more on my bulb part to try and get it a little more tethered looking. So I'm drawing in that little paper that little paper part at the top I just felt like it needed a little something extra with the pen work just to make that part stand out a little more and I will thicken a few of these lines just to make that a little more bold and I could have even done it more but you know you just kind of go with how it feels at the moment and we can always go back later and add to it if we want to. So let me know what you think of this one. Just leave me some comments and let me know. Did you try it? Did you like it? What do you like best? Doing the ink first or the watercolor first? I'm really curious to see, you know, to hear how you feel about it. Thanks for joining me today. Please give me a thumbs up if you liked it and please subscribe. Hope to see you again soon.